Hey guys, so last time I started and finished the interior, so this time I'm going to start on the body. Just like every time, I'm going to mark off all the mold lines left from the factory when molding the body, and I will sand these off. Now, the reason I'm marking these off with permanent marker is to show me where I need to sand, and if the black lines are gone, the mold line is also gone. With the mold lines out of the way, there was something bugging me about the rear of the car and that were the molded in exhausts. So I cut those out, grilled those out and sanded the edges smooth to make it ready for the exhaust tips I will put on later on. With the exhaust tips gone, I only needed to scuff up the body with some 600 grit sandpaper for the primer to grab to it a bit better. With the body all nice, smooth and scuffed up for the primer, the only thing left to do was rescribe the panel lines just to get them a bit deeper so that the paint won't just fill it up all the way and make it look unrealistic. There were a couple of low spots on the body and some mistakes I made uh, with the scribing, so filled those, sanded them smooth and then it was on to the primer. I will be painting the body with zero paints, so I will also use a grey primer from Zero Paints, applied with my Harder and Steinbeck 2-in-1 Evolution airbrush, a 0.4mm needle, and an air pressure of about 35 psi or 3 bar. With the first coat applied, I let it dry for about 5 minutes and then moved on to my second coat. After completing the second coat, I again let it dry for about 5 minutes and moved on to the third and final coat. After finishing off this third and final primer coat, I let it dry for about an hour before I moved on to applying the Lamborghini color I chose. It's called Grigio Telesto and I think it came originally to some of the Lamborghini Aventadors. I thought it was a pretty awesome color, I've had it for a while and I really wanted to use it and this was the perfect opportunity.
with the first coat applied just like the primer I let it dry for about five minutes in between before moving on to the second coat the second coat is another light coat it's a bit heavier than the first coat and then after finishing this one again five minutes of dry time and then moving on to the third and final coat This might not really come through that well on the video, but this color is a pearlescent color. So with the third coat on, I gave it a misting on the entire body just to make sure that all the metallic flakes are even and that there are no streaks in them. To make it even more obvious that this is actually a toy and not really a model kit, Revell did not include any decals, they just used some stickers. And as I am strongly against using stickers on my scale models, I decided to paint the logos on by hand. It's not ideal, but in the end it turned out pretty good, if I might say so myself. If in the future you uh, would run into the same problem as I am, and want to do the same thing I do right here, just keep in mind that either the paint you would use to brush it on is these, the same paint as used on the body, or that it's an acrylic paint, as acrylic paints don't really uh, get affected by any other paints, not even a little bit mostly, so it's pretty safe to use this. Um, the paint on the body is a uh, thinner space paint, and the paint I'm applying to these logos is water-based, otherwise known as acrylic paint, so it won't hurt when it gets clear-coated. Now, another area I needed to touch up on was some of the black vents. Now, I wanted these all to be gloss black, but it was too big of a job and it would not really come out that well if I would just mask them off and cut on the masking tape and on the paint and stuff like that. So again, just like the logos, I decided to freehand paint these on without masking and just being very careful at what I do. And again, just like the logos, I'm using some Phileo acrylic paint, water-based, so it doesn't hurt. And if you mess up, just use some of the uh, acrylic thinners or paint remover, and it won't remove any of the paint on the body, just the paint you applied with the brush. Now, the brush strokes uh, left here are not really visible after clear coating, so that's another thing you don't really need to worry about. As long as you're tidy and uh, satisfied with the results, it's all fun and games. And another thing I might need to say as well, um, this obviously only works if you're applying it onto another paint type with the acrylics and removing it with the acrylic thinners. If the paint on the body is also acrylic, then it doesn't really uh, work when removing it. 
but if you just keep it tidy and don't make any mistakes, you should be fine and the clear coat won't affect it either. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it. In the meantime, check out thescalemodeler.com, my online web shop. Also, don't forget to check me out on Facebook and give me a like to keep updated on all the progress I make on these videos and some other questions I might have in between. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys next time.